Whitewater, who are in the process of consolidating. Uh, one is uh, Hill Moraine, and the other option would be a private ambulance service, which is not, not that. Winona, Winona, speak up louder if you could. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Um, I said we've, we've looked at options, our committee. Uh, the committee members are Jim Gallagher, Pete Sommerhauser, Bonnie Wilson, Dan Wilson, and, and myself. And so we've done a lot of research. Uh, we have visited with, uh, as everybody knows, in a joint session with the village board. Um, and, um, yeah, we visited with the village board in a public meeting. Uh, we have received um, an assurance from Telemoraine that they would be willing to provide service to us via a contract. And uh, with a contract from them, we would be allowed a seat on their board. So it would be a non-voting seat, but at least it would be a seat. And uh, they would provide an ambulance, a fire engine, um, and staff, and we would have to provide a puffer tender, and we would have to provide a facility. We've received permission from the FAA, Federal Air Knowledge and Aviation, and uh, from the Wisconsin Bureau of Bureau of Aeronautics to use the what we call the airport garage right next to the town hall and uh, for housing for equipment staff. So we would still have you know a, a substation or whatever you want to call it located within near the center of the town. Uh, that's where we sit right now. The committee will make our recommendation to the town board Monday night at our regular meeting. We'll give them the options that we're aware of and and uh, give them and the town board will need to make a decision about what they want to do. So I think uh, um, we don't really have, I guess there's not too much else to say. The, the vote on the Kel Moraine board was six to one in our favor. Um, so they seem eager to contract with us and, and I think they could provide an excellent sustainable service. Any questions? Winona, Winona, just talk about the how much are we paying the village versus how much we be paying Kettle Uh The last offer from the village was to, well, it was it was kind of a a draft offer from the village. I um, from their attorney, and it was around two nineteen something, and uh, the and our payment to Kettle Moraine would be two twenty. About $20,000. With a 3% with increase annually, the uh, village, I believe, wanted 8%, at least the first year. Correct. Yeah. And, uh, and anyway, that's, that's, kind of <laughs> that's kind of where we're sitting right now. So the, the big difference to us is that, that we would be served by a district. Um, all of our research has led us to believe that the, that's the way of the future. Small standalone departments are just not going to be able to survive, and that's our big concern. And I'm sure everybody knows that James Small's contract is up at the end of this year. He has taken a position at the state, uh, reported that to us at our last board meeting, and um, so he will no longer be the public safety director. And I guess that's all I know about the village. Anybody they do questions? have posted a job opening for a deputy chief as of yesterday. So they, uh -huh. And I think in there it said something about another posting yet to come. So they're looking for a deputy fire chief and a deputy police chief, I believe. Okay, I suppose those two positions would make up for James's position as the public safety director since he's in charge of both. Yeah. That would be my guess. Overall, uh, Overall, this has been uh, a long, drawn out, very frustrating negotiation. Winona has taken the point on this, along with Jim Gallagher and uh, and uh, Pete Sommerhauser, Bonnie, and Dave. Uh, the conclusion is we will have very good fire and EMS protection. Uh, 
we co the, the town of Delmira co owns with the village uh, a pump, uh, pumper truck, Bonana? Yeah, it's a pumper truck. It's, it's a pretty nice one. At the end, as of the end of this year, according to the contract that we are working under right now, all the co owned equipment that is still there will um, it'll either be sold and the, and the proceeds split. Or either party can purchase out the other party's half. You know, we can we can buy their half of the pumper tender, or they can buy our half of the brush truck, or whatever, at an agreed upon price. If we can't agree upon a price, then it has to be sold publicly, and the proceeds split. So we don't know what we're going to do. Um, we we will need to find a pumper tender. Um, we don't know at all yet what we're going to do about that. Uh, I, I don't know what the village will want to do. We haven't had that conversation with them because we have not made a decision yet. Uh, the board has not yet made a decision about what they're going to do. So if we were to contract with Metal Moraine, we will need to provide a pump that They have extra, I think they have four fire engines. They have uh, two, they have an extra ambulance. I know that they can station over here. So, and with every department in the state, probably the country, the issue is staffing. And by contracting with a district, there's just uh, there's the opportunity for shared staffing for a better distribution of staff. So there's a economies of scale when you become part of a district instead of just a small standalone department. And and uh, you know, Palmyra is by all uh, it's a small village. It's not a big city. So. At any rate, that, that's where we said that's the end of my report. Um, somebody has a direct question, I can either try to answer or get you the answer later. We don't right now see our levies needing to go up. <coughs> um, Winona, I'm not going to jinx uh, the rest of the process um, other than to uh, express my thanks and admiration to you um, and the other members of the Fire and EMS Committee for what you've been doing for, I guess, about eight months. And I know that it's taken a lot of time and a lot of extra work. We appreciate it. Well, thank um, you. And the other members have been every bit as hard working as I have. This has really been a, a joint effort. And, uh, and wait, I can't say enough. <laughs> thank Pete and Bonnie and, and Jim and, and Dan, too, enough, because they've really, I mean, they have put their time into this and done research and come up with article after article for us to consider and it, it's just been a it has been an education that I never expected. And frankly back in back last summer I thought for sure we would we would arrive at a at a brief with the village. That was my intention and my hope. And then when we ran into a little bit of a log jam there and started looking around, um, I we all got well Pete already knew I think which really got an education about consolidation and the, the fact that there is a need for it and it is the way of the future. So we well, prefer to be a little futurist, if you like that. We're not there yet, but we're certainly a lot farther along than we were last December. And again, kudos. Um, Thank you. All right. I want to keep moving here. Um, yes. We have a board discussion of UTV ATV resolution and recommendation to make to the town board. Uh, Greg Twelmeyer, I believe you asked to defer your public comment for this particular topic. The floor is yours. Well, I don't really want the floor being mine right now. I'd like to know what you guys are thinking, because we all know what the election was. Okay, we all know the feelings. At the last meeting, several people spoke in favor of it, and I'm just, I don't even know the word. I'm just concerned that this whole community within a community thing is not the right way to go. I mean, there was, there was an election in spring five months ago. We've been playing around with this. I mean, I think, I think, I think Big Major, he lives closest to H. I pretty seriously think that there isn't a great big, huge ATV, UTV thing going down Highway H because we're at the end of the county. And I'm just, I, I missed the last meeting. I was I was on vacation in Indiana, and I just got the just a bit from Brent, and you know I sent my emails to the town board, and I I would like some kind of way for me to legally 
drive down my road the point four miles to get to the village so I can access Highway H. I mean, that's all. I mean, it's, you know, there's there's so many people here driving back and forth to the dump thing, ATVs, UTVs, just, you know, golf carts. I mean, it's kind of a zoo. So, I mean, everybody, it, it, I don't want to do a broken record, but you actually legally operate ATV, UTV. You have to have a driver's license. It has to be registered. You know, if somebody has an issue with one, there's a license plate on it. You can write it down. You can turn it in the sheriff's department. So, I mean, that's, that's where I am on it. And, you know, I've talked to several of the management district board members, and I guess that's where I am. I mean, nothing more, nothing less. Okay. Um, can I ask a question, Winona? Yeah, Dick? Sure. Um, when the town board sought feedback from property owners on this issue, was it an election or was it a referendum? I may be misremembering it. Some... It, it was an advisory referendum. But um, Greg is absolutely right. It's, the response was about two to one in favor of allowing uh, UTVs and ATVs on town roads. Um, all the roads are open uh, other than yours, but the board discussed this and we felt very strongly that you're a little bit different than the rest of the town, given the population around the, you know, the, the, the proximity of houses to the roads and the narrowness of the road. Now, obviously, the rest of our town roads are wider with shoulders and the whole nine yards. Uh, so we felt like it was up to your community to kind of decide what you want. And to, to hang on what Greg said here a little bit, we, we have, I mean, we talked about it at our meeting a little bit, of the options. So one of them might be a permit for anybody on the lake who wants to operate one to get a permit. Somebody talked about a reduced speed limit um, to 15 miles an hour. My thought, and, and I'm not going to vote on this. This is up to you guys. The board's going to do whatever you decide. But my thought is you can't enforce 15 miles an hour. There's no way to do it. You can enforce permits if you require each person to have a very visible um, black or sign or whatever you want to call it on their ATV or UTV so that it can be seen. And if somebody comes, and we hope it would never happen, but if somebody comes tearing around the lake without one, it's very simple today to pull your cell phone out, get a picture, and report them. Where you can't, you can't do that with a speed limit. But that's that's. Cool. And the other option is just to open it up like the other town road zone. But this is going to be. You guys vote on it. I'm not going to vote because I don't live there. And uh, uh, we haven't seen trouble on the other town roads, the, what we have seen. And uh, nobody gets out there quick enough, obviously, to do anything. But there was there were three of them on Highway 106 last weekend coming north on 106. I don't know where they originated. But they uh, were at the 106 CI intersection. And they were obviously, you know, on a tour. It was not a farmer going from field to field. So I'm not real sure, you know, what, what kind of enforcement the county has at all. Um, I know the hours are not enforced because they're on Highway E at midnight. So that, that's all okay. I have to say. It's, it's up to you guys. So. Other board members. Jerry, go ahead. Okay, I, since I've been out here because in the spring, there's, there's two of them that come around the lake regularly. There's an ATV, a red ATV. It goes very responsible. He drives at a very slow rate of speed and he goes around, does a perfect time. I see more of the little John Deere uh, you know, tractor Gator. things going faster than Gators, going faster than that ATV does. Now there's a UTV that goes too fast and he really speeds around and you got to watch out if you're walking. So I think maybe putting up a sign might slow him down. But right now we have nothing there, but there's a pair of tools. An ATV, which does a great job, and a UTV really drives, I think, but irresponsibly around the lake. Uh, you know, a speed limit might slow him down. That's kind of thing. But that's, that's where I see going, walking around the lake every day. That's what I see out on our roads right now. As a regular walker around the lake, would you agree that our road is somewhat narrow? And when regular vehicles, be they an average-sized automobile, or even a larger, an SUV or a truck, 
that that road is somewhat narrow just for auto traffic and for walkers. That the road is narrow. I think the big trucks are probably more dangerous than the ATV QTV. That's my personal opinion. Yeah. Those exactly. big trucks are they're big. Okay. They're, they're 54 inches wide or 60 inches wide. That's all they are. Okay. A, look the at point, my truck coming the, around the lake. The point I was making, Greg, is the narrowness of the road becomes a factor, particularly when we have a lot of pedestrians. That was all I was saying. I think most people will stipulate, Greg, that an ATV is smaller than a truck. All right. Um, other discussion on this issue? I yeah. will uh, I will be recusing myself from a vote because I'm on the town board as well. But my feeling is enforceability of anything will be a problem. However, in deference to what the referendum vote was uh, and what we have gotten feedback from a number of different residents, and I've gotten feedback on both sides of that issue, open it wide up, close it down totally, uh, permit for residents only, and open it up with a 15 mile an hour speed limit. And I kind of agree with Jerry. I, I'm suggesting that it would be my position, and again, I'm not going to vote, I'm going to recuse myself, uh, that we open it up, post it for ATV, UTV traffic with a 15 mile an hour speed limit, and, you know, the, the group headed by Frank Sauter that's been pushing this so hard, they have been very, very responsible. There's another group headed by a guy by the name of Dave in Reardon, I think. And I don't know a whole lot about them. Um, one of the concerns that's been raised by both Winona and myself is that these groups, they get, they get 20, 25, 30, 40 of these things on a, on a big recreational run. They start at the BP in Belmyra. And they go to Helenville, and they go to Sullivan, and all, all points in between, and they end up at Squiddies. Uh, that's been their typical route, and there's a lot of alcohol involved. Now, I understand that, again, they're governed by rules of the road regarding driving under the influence. However, enforcement is a serious problem or a serious deficiency. So where I'm coming down is, I suggest we open the roads around the lake, but limit it to 15 miles an hour. I think you're right, Jerry. I think that'll help. Is it going to solve any potential problems? Maybe not. Enforceability is a question. I don't think Blue Spring Lake roads are going to become a destination for these 20, 30, 40 group rides. I, I, I just don't see that happening. If it does happen and we encounter problems, we can come back to the town board and request an amendment to the resolution, shutting it down, limiting to residents with permits or whatever. None of those things are cast in stone. They can all be changed with the proper procedures. That's my position. Other thoughts? Yeah, I always have some. Yeah, I would echo. Right, well. I would echo what uh, Jake is saying from the standpoint of opening up the roads, uh, 15 mile an hour, 20 mile an hour. I, you can pick that speed as far as I'm concerned. I'm an avid walker around the lake. Yeah, a little bit narrow, but at the same time, I'll, I'll say this. I, I, I think Dan, uh, excuse me. I think Brent brought up a great point last time. Is if you want to have friends that you want to UTV with. And you can't have them on the lake if you do this permit thing, right? They can't come out afterwards after enjoying, you know, the rest of the county. Um, they can't have them over to the house or anything like that. Neither could Greg, right? So I, I just don't see that. I think we see a lot of people with UTVs uh, taking them to the dump. So I want, you know, I don't want to do special permits. And then finally, as far as the speed thing and a, and a pedestrian safety thing, I mean, my God, we've got these jet skis running all over the freaking lake. I mean. They're, as, they're faster and running closer to people than, than most of these UTVs walk on the road. So, quite frankly, I say...
thing up, and let's post the speed limit. Anybody else have some thoughts? I do. Um, I listened very carefully to what Greg Perlmeyer had to say. In fact, I had a lengthy conversation with him um, a week ago, maybe two weeks ago. And what I heard Greg say is, I want to have a UTV or an ATV, and I want to be able to use it here in Blue, Blue Spring Lake. And I think the permit so suggestion or the permit route satisfies our people. Now, if we even broadened it for permit holders and their guests, we are still limiting these narrow roads to some ATV and UTV users. As far as speed limits, as far as letting the genie out of the bottle and coming back later and saying this was a mistake, we've got these 20, 30 vehicle tours going through here, it's a problem. <clears throat> I think once the genie's out of the bottle, we're going to have a tough time putting it back in. Yeah, but you're I still... Uh, hold on, Jim. You're still opening up the cheese bottle by even doing permits. It's just kind of uh, it, you're just but it's, but it's, just changing the you know, what I'm doing. What I'm what I'm doing is trying to respond, Paul, to the needs of our residents, and that falls, in my opinion, in two groups. One is those who want to own and operate an ATV, UTV, and the other group who doesn't own and operate such a vehicle. And by having a permit situation, we accommodate our people who want to use them, we protect the non-users, walkers, strollers, whatever. I don't see a gain by opening it up. Opening up. I don't think it's positive in any way. And I would also say, before we give Mr. Souter and his group too much credit for uh, saintly conduct. They march themselves right into our parade and put their vehicles in our parade, knowing full well that we hadn't addressed the issue yet. I noticed it. I decided that a parade getting going for the first time in three years with all its organizational issues didn't need a discussion about UTVs and ATVs, so we let it pass. But before we anoint them with sainthood, they knew darn good and well they shouldn't have been on the road, but magically they were in the parade. Okay, they made their statement, and I'm making my statement. That's all. My statement is they knew they shouldn't have been there, but they were there anyway. Now, that but is, that they're here and they're there in the discussion of whether we do this. But it is. But it is, Paul. Because yeah. it's, it's the G, it, we're opening the bottle and the genie's getting out. Now, if we open the bottle and the genie is out, our residents, and even our residents and their guests, then we are still meeting the needs of 212 property owners. That Jim, is what we're supposed to be doing. Jim, I, I'd like to I'd like to disagree a little bit. You yeah. have you can blame the Fourth of July on me because Frank called and asked, "Do you think we can put a couple of ATVs in the parade?" I'm like, "There's every other motorized vehicle in there. Why can't you?" Okay. Jim, Okay, there's... Okay. And, and Greg, Greg, I don't remember you referring that to a board member. They just did it. They did it on your invitation, am I right? They did it on my invitation, but you invited everybody else that's got a garden tractor, an ATV, a UTV to pull something on it. Hey, okay, you, you, you did the whole thing. Big deal. That's water under the bridge. But this whole concern with 20, 30 ATVs, UTVs coming down the road on one of these rides can be addressed with myself or Frank going to the two clubs that would do it and say, hey, you guys, leave Blue Spring Lake out of your route. It's real easy. Okay, I mean, it's it's not that hard to just say to the to Pearden and to Frank, whenever you guys do a ride, try not to include, or not try not to include, don't include Blue Spring Lake on the ride. End of story. Now, one of the things, Greg, thank you. One of the things that I asked at the informational meeting of Frank Souter, and I've asked in every discussion of UTVs and ATVs, and absolutely no one has answered the question. 
why do owners of UTVs and ATVs who are not residents or property owners on Blue Spring Lake and who have access to the other roads within the county, why do they need our 2.4 miles? And nobody's answered that question. It's just been it's okay. okay, for some reason, yeah, you and I totally disagree on this because their roads in the town of East Troy, I'm a resident, or town, I'm sorry, town of Palmyra. I'm a resident of the town of Palmyra. I can vote. I voted. My family voted. On the lake voted. Okay? Two to one people voted in the town of Palmyra. You Greg, could. we talked about that. That was an advisory referendum. You know what? Look at the look at the ballot. It did not say advisory on any. Okay? I looked at the ballot several times. Well, we can postpone this further and look at the ballot if you like. Yeah. You know what? You're gonna do what you want. Let me let me jump in here just a second. Let me jump in just a second. It it was an advisory referendum, and the word we ran that past the past the attorney and past the uh, uh, the town association. And the way it was worded, you don't have to say this is an advisory referendum. If it's not an advisory referendum, you would need to say that it wasn't. Uh, but it was it was an advisory referendum, and that's to me that's neither here nor there. I agree. The vote was very much in favor of allowing them. That's why we've done it. We solved. We hope some of the problems by lowering the speed limit on every road that we can legally lower the speed limit on by default. That's Tamarack Road. Uh, it's uh, Hooper Road. It was uh, Dick. Did we do Zion Road? I think we, we did, did not we? do Zion Road. We did oh, we, we did uh, Little Prairie Road. We're dropping yeah. the, the speed limit there uh, around the Horseman's Park to 15 miles an hour because you got these trailers coming in and out uh, yep. across that road. The speed limit is 45, so we'll be lowering the speed limit right at Horse Horseman's Park to 15 miles an hour. And posted in the appropriate signs. Hooper Road, uh, we're lowering up from 45 to 35 because we've got driveways coming in there within a couple hundred feet of each other. The same thing with Tamarack Road. We've had issues on Tamarack, particularly with speeders. So that's been passed. Uh, I'm working with the county. I'm getting the appropriate signage posted. Uh, that should be done within the next yeah, months to six weeks. And we thought this was a better option because one of the concerns we had is if we limit ATVs and UTVs to a specific speed, let's say 25 miles an hour, and somebody pops over a hill doing 35 or 45 miles an hour, that in itself is a thing. So I, I think safely, um, and probably not around the lake, it's not the same there because it's, well, most places are pretty visible, but, um, you know, traffic isn't going that fast anyway if they're going 25 miles an hour. But we thought on roads that are right now 45, it would really be dangerous to have a, an ATV or UTV going, you know, a lot slower. So we did not post speed limits for ATVs and UTVs on any of the town roads. It's the same as, as it is for any other traffic. That makes sense. Anyone else want to be heard on this issue? <laughs> I think we've wasted a lot of what we spent a lot of time. Let's put it that way. The whole of it, there's only going to be, if you look at it, Gray's got one, there's probably going to be something, maybe three or four ATVs, UTVs around the whole lake. So we spent a lot of time talking with these three or four people, might do, and a couple other people coming in. I, I agree with, with Paul. I think the jet skis are a lot bigger nuisance, a lot bigger threat to the safety of the residents than a jet ski or UTV or ATV driving around the lake. There just aren't that many around. You look at Paul Meyer and you look at him, on the roads off by Zion, they're just, I've seen very, very few driving the roads. My son-in-law has it out there somewhere, and they hardly ever use it. They just, no, it's just not, not economical or not viable to use. They use a car, and this is too great. So I don't think, I think a lower speed limit, we would have maybe Greg and his friends, three or four people using it. So we spent a lot of time talking about those three or four people. I don't think you're going to see big caravans of people coming through here at all. And once we do, then we got them. Well, well at any rate, we're, the board meeting is Monday night, <laughs> our town board meeting. So we would uh, we would like to have you guys 
we would like a recommendation from you guys, so I'm suggesting we vote on this. All right. You know, having heard, have, go ahead. Did I cut off anybody? Greg Bauer, were you going to speak? No, I was just going to say that, you know, it sounds like we're letting uh, ATVs on the lake 15 miles an hour, and the question seems to be permit or not. And I think just for consistency and enforcement, I, I agree with Dick Natrix's uh, position that it's consistent and let's use the 15 mile an hour to help try to slow probably law abiding people down. You're not going to slow down people that want to speed anyway. So I support Dick's uh, original proposal, even though he's not voting. John, I haven't heard from you. Uh, yeah, I guess I I don't live on the lake, but um, I don't see where you guys would have a destination for a club to be out there. If you had a tavern on the lake or something where they would be, you know, coming to, I think you might have a lot bigger problem. But uh, without a destination, you know, out there for them to go to, I think they're going to head other directions. You know, that's my thing when they put a big ride together. I think it's going to be more yeah. just your residents going around here, you know, myself. Yeah, and my, my comments were directed only at what I have heard from other people. So, and and of, of those two things, that's why I said what I said, and I don't have an opinion either way, so it's up to you guys. And the, the only issues, like I said, I've seen in the town are people on the state highway, and then late night traffic <coughs> on highway against this cop. So yeah, they're supposed to be off the road by dark, I think, is there. I forget yeah, what our uh, time is. 10, 10 p.m. 10 p.m. You know. Yeah, well, they're off at tail time when, when they're off. So, uh, and we, you know, that's uh, either here or there. So that has nothing to do with this. Right. <laughs> at the county level? 